Do you believe in curses? I do. However, I also believe in miracles. And because of my belief, and most importantly, because of my faith, it has given me the strength to be a Chicago Cubs fan. Doesn't matter if you're a baseball fan. It doesn't matter if you're an avid sports fan. Even if you're the diehard fan that loves all sports, you are aware that the Chicago Cubs have not won a World Series in over 108 years. They haven't even been to the World Series since 1945. Why? Some would say the curse of the Billy Goat back in 1945 during the World Series at Wrigley Field. Wrigley's official kicked out Billy and his goat out of the stadium, prompting Billy to place a curse on the Cubs. And well, since that time, it sure feels like theirs was a hex over this franchise. The greatest baseball player in franchise history, Mr. Baseball himself, Ernie Banks, was unable to bring Chicago a championship. Most notable people remember the 2003 Chicago Cubs. What game? It's simply been dubbed the Bartman game. You remember Steve Bartman incident that occurred in 2003 during the NLCS game played between the Cubs and the Florida Marlins? This cold night on October 14, 2003 at Wrigley Field when fans would blame and easily picked on Steve Bartman for reaching out over the railing and catching a foul ball. Moises Aloof felt he had an opportunity to catch. But well, as they say, the rest is history. There's the 1984 NLCS when the Cubs made a trade for a dominant pitcher in Rick Sutcliffe but couldn't get the job done. The Greg Maddox years, that team could not put it together and he would just go on to be a Hall of Fame pitcher for the Atlanta Braves and win a World Series somewhere else. Oh yeah, all that money we spent on free agents like Alfonso Soriano. 1998, Sammy Sosa, what a wild and exciting year. Still, no World Series. Time and time. Again, this team has come up short. In comes the miracle worker, Theo Epstein. And finally, Cubs fans around the world have hope. I mean, some would say he single-handedly built the Red Sox into a dynasty and breaking the curse of the Bambino. He brings in an old-school, new-school approach coach in Madden, followed by a trade for Anthony Rizzo, high-dollar free agents like John Lester, and the city is buzzing. We are young, but we are good, and we are young up-and-coming stars like Addison Russell, Chris Bryant, Rizzo, Javier Baez, with a mixture of great veterans like Dexter Fowler, John Lackey, Brian Zubris, and Hayward. Wait, can it be true? The Cubs even go out and get the intimidating closer in Arados Chapman. And not since 1945 has my Cubs, I'm sorry, has the Chicago Cubs finally on their way to the World Series. I grew up on the South Side, just a South Side kid who people ask all the time, how could you cheer for the lovable losers of the North Side? My answer, always the same. My grandfather was a Cubs fan, and heck, they were the only team that came on WGN television when I was young. Guys like Ryan Sandberg, Rick Sutcliffe, Lee Smith, the great Andre Dawson. No matter how good we looked, we just couldn't put it together. I never blamed Steve Bartman. I never blamed anybody. Heck, I never even blamed that black cat that ran the field back in 1984. It's just the cards the Cubs were dealt. And hell, our rival St. Louis Cardinals just had history on their side. Even on this day, no past heartbreak, no past 10 years, no better luck next year. The lovable losers of the North Side, the baby Cubs, are finally on their way into believing in miracles. Holy cow, as Harry Carey would say, fly the W, go Cubs, go. How do you break the curse? You believe in faith. Faith in all the Chicago Cubs fans have over the past century.